It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Superfan Jim. Yes, and this week, we finally have the leaked footage of Thunderbolts, yay for me, and your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man from D23 last week. We'll talk about those. Craven released a new trailer this week to um, everyone's surprise. So hopefully everyone's watched that. If not, we have a link in the show notes. Uh, Jim and I will be going over that. I went to Fan Expo Chicago for the first time ever this week. I'm going to give you a recap at the top of the show. And Jim has been following along for the ride. He has he has been getting you know uh, tweets and 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 texts and stuff like that. So uh, he's going he's going to give me some questions on that and more. So, Jim, Superfan Jim, thank you for, for stepping in uh, for today's uh, episode. I do appreciate you doing this last night. And, you know, as uh, most people may, I mean, I know you're a teacher and you're going back to school tomorrow. So this means even more to me that you're able to do this last minute. So thank you. No problem. Fortunately, it's uh, just teachers reporting tomorrow. So I don't have to uh, step in front of students just yet. Okay. Well, if then you could be like, well, guess what I was doing last night? I was on a podcast. You know, really, really impress them. Exactly. A bit. Uh, flex, <laughs> flex those uh, that that credibility uh, at the top of the top of the class there. But um, yes, thank you. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just get this out of the way because I I was I just got in back today uh, from Chicago Fan Expo 2024, previously known as Wizard World. So those listening may be familiar with the uh, show Wizard World. Uh, spent the the weekend there with uh. Friends of mine uh, listen to the show, uh, Jason and uh, another, our other friend Jeremy, who does not listen to the show, even though he should. But uh, we were able to get up there Friday, despite the weather's attempts to flood us out with all the rain, uh, and uh, spend uh, Friday at the show, Saturday at the show. And um, the most important thing, uh, Jim, I was able to get my Chicago dogs in because that's the the whole reason I would go to Chicago for for a comic panel. Um, but I would say. Go, uh, go ahead, Jim. Oh, I, no, I was just saying, right. You got to get the Chicago dog in. Yes, Portillo. We spent we spent probably two hours at Portillo's yesterday, just us three. We, had, we ate our dogs, and we were just shooting the shit for like two hours yesterday night. It was really, really good awesome. time. Um, you know you know how those go. You've been to, to C2E2s with us. You know, it's just, uh, it's all about yep. the camaraderie, really, at the end of the day. And um, yep. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go jump into the show. So a Fan Expo slash Wizard World was huge this year. Uh, Jason got uh, his photo with Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker himself, the Joker himself at the show. Uh, so that was a big win for him. I came through and on my way to the show, purchased a photo op with Charlie Cox, Daredevil himself along the way. And, um, you know, there were a lot of uh, celebrities there, um, Star Wars celebrities, Giancarlo Esposito, Cameron Monaghan. Um, Diane Lee Inosanto, who uh, played uh, Morgan Elsbeth, I, I think, in Ahsoka and uh, uh, The Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. um, Rosario Dawson was there on Sunday. We did not get to see her, but she's, she's there on Sunday. A lot of Star Wars people. Uh, they had a lot of voice actors. Uh, Naruto. I was in a voice. I went to a, a panel on a Saturday morning uh, for uh, voice actors, and it had, like, um, you know, Pinky and the Brain voice actors. Uh, Jim Cummings, you know, who does Hondo, Onaka in Star Wars, but also like he's done Winnie the Pooh since the 80s and Tigger. A lot of Disney yep. characters. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Fred Tataskior, I think he did the Hulk for a long time. And yep. Uh, yep. It, it was it was a really fun panel. It was actually hosted by a friend of ours, Victor. Uh, you may know. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So Victor was there. He was hosting that panel. So I went and saw him and caught up with him afterwards. I hope to have him on the show uh, here. Uh, shortly but he does the fan expo panels he also introduced the mark hamill panel he was a, he was the uh um moderator for that so uh you know kudos to him for oh, being there and doing all that fun stuff but i will tell you uh, you know being c2e2 and being here at the at, down at the mccormick place but this one is at the rosemont center jim i don't know if you're familiar with that across from the airport but um no. one no. of 
but how was it? One of the big things I will I will say, um, the entrance is weird because you have to zigzag in to get to the entrance. Like they're lying, um, you know, how to dampen a line borrowed heavily from Disney, I would say, because you have to walk through quite a bit to get to the back uh, to where you actually come into the place. And then when you're in there, you're kind of in like a, you know, the center lobby and then you go down some steps and then you're into the show floor where all the, the panels and, and arts were. And it's it was it was awesome. Uh, I would say there were so many comic book providers there. So if you were into comic books, there were so many actual comic book people there with a lot of things. Um, and if you keep going down, there'd be a lot more booths. I would say, you know, uh, there was a food court section that had like, you know, um, different items that you would not normally get. Not like, you know, get like just burgers off. They had burger joints there, but like you had like a, a, a poke bowl or like a, a walk, uh, like a taco place as well. Um, you know, artist alley, the celebrity things actually butted up against the, um, the floor as well. And then if you kept going, um, it, well, actually, if you went left instead of right, right was, was on this. If you went left, there was the um, the panels upstairs, the the main of the event thing. So it, the ceilings were a lot lower than C two E two, which I think is like the big thing. Like to get over me, it's like it felt lower than C two E two, and it, it, you, I wouldn't say it wasn't bad, but it was just lower. Um, Friday was great. A lot of people were not there on Friday. Uh, Saturday packed, like way too packed, and I think it was you know a lot of people coming in. For the Mark Hamill, oh Hayden Christensen was there. Duh, I was going to say the other stars. Hayden Christensen was there, so oh, people were getting yeah. photos with okay. them and signatures. Um, a lot of the, uh, um, you know, uh, the screencast was there uh, as well. Uh, some other people. So it, you know, Saturday was just packed, but you know, Friday was just the amount of right to kind of get our stuff and get in there. A couple um, comic comic uh, people, uh, writers um, slash artists. A lot of them canceled before they got, uh, you know, earlier this month. So um, Jeremy, who was going with us, kind of disappointed for that. But, you know, we were able to kind of salvage them there. Um, you, Dan Slott was there, writer of Spider-Man. Uh, he, oh, I, have yeah. a I have a clip from him. He's writing Spider-Boy. So um, for the show, I took a different approach to talk to different people. I was like, I want to ask people the questions nobody's asking. So I gave people a choice, one or two. If they said one, they got the candy. What's your favorite candy bar? What's your favorite non-chocolate candy? And then what's your favorite movie theater snack question? They said two. They got what's your favorite fast food burger? What is, uh, do you like fries, tater tots, or wedges best? And then uh, what, what's your favorite soft drink? And Dan Slott, uh, he's, he likes five guys. He enjoys potato wedges and uh, likes, uh, I, think, I think he said, uh, root beer, A&W root beer. That's what he said. Uh, oh, for, nice. Yeah. For that. Uh, and then I also asked Andy Kubert, who is an artist. Um, he, he's done, you know, a lot of uh, Spider-Man, X-Men. I had him sign an Ultimate X-Men book for me. He uh, he got the same question. He likes uh, In-N-Out burger. He also said he would take tater tots, and then um, his drink of choice was Diet Coke. So these were the questions I was asking people on the show floor this weekend. Uh, so I've got some clips from that. And I will tell you the one I couldn't record because they don't let you take phones in, as I got to ask Charlie Cox. Daredevil himself, what was, what's his favorite fast food burger? And, and can you guess, Jim, what his favorite fast food burger is out of every place in the world? Because he is, he, is, he is English. Man. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'm actually blinking. I would say for uh, just because of L.A., like in and out it's in, It was in and out actually. You are correct. Uh, Charlie Cox is an oh, in nice. and out man. Uh, a lot of people said in and out um, there as well, so that, that's that's um, pretty is uh, a lot of votes for them. So uh, it was pretty fun to ask him that stuff and kind of go over that. Um, I w I was I bought some comic books, some single issues, um, but I will tell you the thing I bought the most for the first time I've ever seen at a comic con, Jim. Hot sauce, a hot sauce booth there, a local Wait. company that makes hot sauce. Oh, a booth. Okay, wow. Like at like a table, like guess selling it at the at at a booth. Um, yeah, and it was uh, sure. they're called Gin uh, Gindos, and I think it's uh, yeah Gindos G I N D O S, and they uh, they craft their own hot sauces, and they don't use oils, so it doesn't like stay in your mouth. It's like a fully flavorful kind of thing. And um, oh. I bought eleven bottles of hot sauce from them. Um, <laughs> they they were doing samples on a little spoon, so I got everything they had there. And then they um, they had a comic book. These three they did these little comic books, and they have like these three super hot ones based on. The comic book stuff. So uh, gindos.com, G-I-N-D-O-S. Um, looked up there. They uh, got their six-pack uh, of um, original 
spice of life. Uh, so original ha- uh, jalapeno poblano, honey habanero, smoked garlic cilantro, truffle parmesan, which is one of their best. I will tell you, if you like parmesan, you can it really wow. comes through. And then last week was Vampire Slayer, which yeah. is very garlicky, um, spicy, but not it. And then yesterday he brought in a different, um, a unique one, which was a, um, oh my gosh, I'm 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 blanking. Uh, I'm gonna have to look it up. I, oh my gosh, it's like a sandwich that you dip. Uh, French onion. It was French onion. That's what it was. A French onion. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. Sauce. So um, I was able to, to to pick up all those and and hang out with them and kind of talk about their sauces a little bit. Uh, they're doing a um like a, a um, I guess a beer fest and hot sauce kind of thing, and they have a hot sauce of the month club. So uh, as someone who's a big foodie, I'm very excited for this um, to to kind of get into their, um, you know, uh, again, a hot sauce of the month club and, and, and try these out with people and kind of show them off as they as as they show up along the way. Um, so right. that, that was fun. I, I, cool. Coming home with more than that in comic books, I was I was pretty happy with myself. <laughs> Yeah, I would say, uh, what kind of kick do those have? Are they super spicy, or are they well, just like... No, I I think, you know, the, their, their um, garlic, um, or their Vampire Slayer, which is the garlic one, was the spiciest of the regular, and it wasn't bad at all. Honestly, like I said, they, they don't want heat that lingers in your mouth. They're not here to ruin your day. They want to make hot sauces okay. flavorable. Uh, now, I will tell you that their um, comic book ones, hot sauces, and I've got them pulled up here, the Axe, the Hammer, and the Crusher are extremely hot. Um, those, those are, yeah. uh, habanero, scorpion peppers, uh, ghost peppers, Carolina reapers and stuff in, in, in one and that's the ax. So, um, Ooh. yeah, so it, it was, uh, very, those are very warm. So those are more of like, uh, I would probably get those out for people who are really into hot sauces, but the other ones, like I said, the original ones are very flavorful and I would put them almost on not just wings or, or chicken, but I would probably try them on different foods like burgers or um anything else kind of along the way um wow so it's 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 very it's it's, it's interesting to see something like that there rather than like there was a bunch of tables that were doing um lightsabers this year right um there was a bunch of people uh you know doing obviously there are they weren't in artist alley but they were selling like big prints of their arts along the way um, there's a you know, oh, yeah, yeah. video game booth, a lot of people 3D printing, a lot of anime uh, inspirations there. I know some of the guests were anime inspirations. Uh, I walked a lot on the show floor on Friday um, because I didn't, I didn't have anything to wait for. And, but um, it, it was, it, I had a really good time there um, seeing everything and seeing everybody uh, kind of along the way. Um, what what, what, what questions do you got? Andy Kubert. Yeah. Oh, that's, I was about to roll into that. <laughs> yeah. I know you said Dan Slott and Andy Kubert, but what what artists other than those two were you happy to see? Uh, I mean, those are the guys I remember the most. I will tell you, say um, the artist for uh, Invincible, Ryan Otley, was there, and he had a bunch of books and a oh, bunch of Funkos yeah. that he was signing and stuff and and doing those things. Um, I can't. There's another guy who's been doing the Ninja Turtles lately, um, and I can't think of his name. He was there. Um, as Jeremy saw him, um, but r- it really not a lot. It, it it was a lot of not a lot of comic book people overall. It feels like um, coming okay. from Wizard World into Fan Expo, they they carried a lot of their uh, celebrities with them because it's one of those things where we were walking by uh, in between all the celebrity signing tables, and you could see the celebrities behind the tables. Right? Uh, they were like, can't take oh, photos yeah. of them, mm-hmm. but like you can see them. Um, you know, uh, obviously I saw Cameron Monaghan. Uh, you know, from Star Wars uh, Fallen Order and stuff like that. Uh, he's also uh yep. quote unquote the Joker in Gotham, if you will. Um Right, yeah. Frank Welker that. and uh Peter Cullen had a booth there, the Transformers guys. They were oh, doing yeah. photos and stuff with them. Uh Oh, um uh, Elizabeth Berkeley from uh, uh Saved by the Bell, also Showgirls. I I did bring that up uh, with right. someone else. She was there. Uh we saw her from a distance. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it was just interesting to, to kind of see all, all these people, um, you know, in those lines, but I will say that's the worst part about it because they had all those celebrity sightings on the same show floor and they just had like the, like the lines taped off on the floor. So everybody was crowded. It was so crowded in there with that. People were, you know, just sitting down in the floor and the lines waiting and it was kind of a hassle to walk through that. And, uh, the photo uh, area was even more because people were just waiting around to be called for their stuff. I ended up waiting 
Um, a little farther down, I could still hear everybody walk up when my time was right, but it was just a, a, a wild uh, kind of thing on Saturday. So a uh, Friday for me, if I go back, Friday is going to be where it is, and Saturday might be a little more, a little more relaxed at the end of the day. For that, gotcha. Uh, and then I was going to say, my jealousy knows no bounds with Charlie Cox. He was supposed to be in Des Moines at a con this summer. Mm-hmm. And he canceled, I think, because they were filming Daredevil. And wow. then Vincent D'Onofrio was going to come in to take his place. And then he canceled, also because I think they were filming Daredevil. So D'Onofrio was supposed to be there this weekend, and he had to to back out for something else. So um, I, I know half of your pain, at least. But yeah. get, getting my picture of Charlie, he, he, he's so cool. He's such a chill dude. Like That was the cool part about oh, meeting him. That's awesome. Um, that's exactly what I hoped he would be like. Oh, uh, yeah. Because uh, the con in Kansas City that I, I go to with my daughter Hannah every year, uh, John Bernthal and D'Onofrio were supposed to have a combo photo or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd actually bought that. And then D'Onofrio canceled. And I kind of thought at the time, I mean, I like I like Bernthal, don't get me wrong, but I just... Couldn't quite justify yeah. spending the money for that for just him. Right. So I ended up not doing it. And like the more Punisher stuff that's been coming out, the more I'm like, I probably should have done that. By- buyer's remorse, right? Kind of thing. Uh, J- yep, Jason got exactly. a Jason got a Hulk omnibus, the original Hulk omnibus with him uh, there. And, you know, he, he, he he's going to be mad at me for saying this, but he's kind of wishy-washy on it. And, uh, he, and, the, and the, I kind of poked him like, you should get it. Just go ahead and get it. And he ended up getting a big hardcover right. omnibus of the, the first Hulk. Uh, first thirty years, which was like cool. the original run from yeah. the sixties. Yeah, yeah, the original okay, cool. Hulk stuff. Uh, so yeah, poked, poked a little bit. It, it was cool. A lot of comic. Uh, I will say the comic book stuff was cool. To go, it was really fun to go through on Friday before other people kind of showed up. Um, some booths have their shit together. They're alphabetized. Uh, they're even uh, sorted by price. Uh, some people did not. They were just long boxes full of random stuff, and I was disappointed in those vendors. Uh, oh, yeah. Did not spend a lot of time there. Uh, overall but um it was a good time i think you know just seeing something different being somewhere different um very very happy again like some of the comic book people showing up um but you know i think it's a if i do it again i start you can get a two on friday with a vip pass or an all all weekend pass and um that first two hours for everyone else lets in that's the perfect time to be there uh and then saturday just spin it out everywhere else Uh, we so we went to portillo's um on friday night we ate really late because uh, the the floor closed down at nine, uh, and uh, Jason was watching oh, wow. the Mark Hamill panel, um, and uh, that's actually on YouTube. The whole Mark Hamill panel is on YouTube. You can go watch it uh, at Fan Expo. And oh, uh, wow. we went down the street to literally not less less than three blocks away to a place called Shoeless Joe's, and we walk in. It's Comic Con oh. weekend. We're like, oh, it's gonna be packed. Are we gonna be able to find a seat? Not a single person in the place, Jim. <laughs> Uh, just us and like another group of people who look to be regulars. So, um, food was good. Everything was fine, but it was just really, really weird on a comic con. We can be that close to a convention center and not see anybody in a restaurant. So yeah. Over, over um, great time. So here's the, here's the big question. Yeah. Next year, you can only go to one. You go into C2E2 or are you go into fan expo again? Man, I, I got a, I got a look. I, I, I think it's going to come down to the, the list of people, right? I'm not. I usually don't go for the celebrities. The Charlie Cox thing was a last minute purchase because I was like, man, with Daredevil coming out, this is going to be a great opportunity. Um, I, I, I figure it's a smaller convention. I always like going to C2E2. Uh, I've always been a huge fan until this year when uh, they they personally attacked me. Is what I'm telling people. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to have to just take a look at the lineup. Maybe maybe I do both. Maybe I try to split the difference. Um, doing these recap episodes is really fun. Like I, I want to do more i want to do more interviews and you know if i have ability with more people there i think i could do that but as a one-man show it's very difficult to do some of those uh those things along the way right so um i, I don't know i i i really See, don't know uh right now you should have recorded the two hours of bullshitting with uh uh jason and uh jeremy well, yeah I his name yeah yeah the jeremy, jeremy that's yeah uh, that's jason like, jeremy yeah. yeah yeah i should have we, yeah. we had a lot of laughs we had a lot of good times i tell you uh, for people like, oh, it's Comic Con's all about being. It's not about the show floors. It's about you know hanging out with people. I said this for our Gen Con episode, right? The show floor is fun, but it's just having the camaraderie, hanging out with with your dudes. We were able, you know, drive up right. there for five hours in a car. You know, we're having a good time. 
Uh, you're you're kind of living with these dudes. We're all in a shared hotel room. Um, then, you know, on the way back, you know, five more hours. So it's just, you know, about having that time and making those memories along the way. Right. Um, well, hopefully next year I can, uh, I can go. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully I'll have a better heads up on, on fan expo and then we'll see what, what C2E2 brings and, and maybe more people, um, again, the comic cards will be able to commit and not have to cancel due to uh, personal or professional options for that. Well, then I saw there was another con going on over the weekend too, that like Scott Snyder was at and Greg Capullo. Um, it was like a terror con or something like that. Oh, okay. Cause Scott Snyder, I think canceled from this one. So that was one of the, oh. uh, <laughs> the events. So maybe, maybe he canceled because he was double booked or something. And the other one paid more. Uh, so yeah. I, yeah. Especially with Capullo being at the other one, I'm sure they bring some numbers. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be I'd be interested to know. Uh, they didn't tell us why uh, they were not able to make it, but that that makes some sense, kind of with with that mm. knowledge. Uh, any other questions before yeah. we jump into cool. our in our in our show notes? Last quick one. I know C two E two is gigantic at the uh, McCormick Center. Yes. Square footage. How would you compare this? Is it bigger, smaller, smaller. about the same? Smaller, much smaller. Smaller. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, you can much tell smaller. that McCormick has like three floors, and this one. Maybe I think has two floors worth of stuff. Um, okay. You know, and then the the amount of floor space on the bottom much less, much less. Like again, that's why I think one day I was able, to, we were able to cover most of the floor the first day, uh, the first couple hours, and then kind of oh, dig wow. into what yeah. we were looking for. So it's much smaller, but it's not a complaint. It's just I think it's just a little different. Audience. Uh, gotcha. No, that's cool. I it, it's maybe a little bit more intimate than than C two E two. Which fine. I mean, it's not a complaint at all. It's yeah. just a, an observation. So yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think C two E two is good. I'm glad you guys had a good time. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna consider it. Maybe maybe I try to do both next year. Split them up. Uh, split them up down the middle, and and you know do one and the other. And just do a little bit, a little bit less at each, and kind of have a good time. All right, jumping into our news uh, notes today. Jim has just been barely briefed on these before we jumped in here. So uh, he's gonna be reacting live with you folks along the way, even though he can see the list now. But uh, Deadpool and Wolverine is now the highest grossing R-rated film, passing Joker. And uh, Todd Phillips, the director of Joker and the upcoming Joker fully on due, uh, has uh, congratulated them on, on their success with an image of Deadpool doing uh, the uh, Bye 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 dance on the stairs from Joker, which is really fun. Oh, nice. <laughs> Um, yeah, he, I got to say, I, I saw Deadpool and Wolverine the Thursday it came out. Okay. And um, due to life obligations, I haven't been able, I, I desperately want to go see it again, mm-hmm. especially in the theater. Um, so I'm really glad this has legs. Yeah, absolutely. I just looked up uh, the, the weekend. The um, box office is doing great right now. Um, Alien Romulus is pulling... Um, you know, numbers uh, off this weekend. Deadpool Wolverine is second, <laughs> um, uh, right behind it. So, oh. you know, it's still going to be doing it. I'm going to take a look here at, uh, again, we go to the numbers.com, the dash numbers.com is where we can pull our information here. It is currently seen at 1.142 billion worldwide. So, um, I'd be interested to know. It says uh, domestic R rated films is number one. Uh, in the box office, number two. From, what do you think is beating at the box office this year, Jim? If you were domestically, if you were to guess, but the number two movie this year, the number two movie, Deadpool and Wolverine it's... overall. What's what's the first one? Oh, uh, Inside Out two. Inside Out two. Yeah, it's still got about a hundred, a uh, hundred million more to catch up on Inside Out two, which it could do. I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. Unlike Borderlands, which I saw is getting a digital release very soon in a week or two. So. Uh, oh, yeah. For those who didn't go see it uh, or didn't want to go see it because reviews were so bad, it will be out. Everybody. Watch. Yeah. Um, but overall, Disney's uh, you know killing it at the box office this year with uh, Inside Out 2, Deadpool, Wolverine, uh, and uh, Alien Romulus is, is also theirs um, through their Fox 20th Century. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was also another 20th Century. Uh, so... Um, yeah, kudos to that, and uh, you know, um, not saying any, nothing bad against Joker. Uh, it's not a us versus them kind of thing. It's just you know, um, Deadpool, Wolverine reached a lot of generations, and and Joker was able to to reach a big audience as well. So we'll see if the sequel um, for Joker comes up on on this one. 
Yeah, maybe they can recoup some of that ten billion dollars that Warner Brothers lost. Yeah, uh, I would not. I would not stake uh, ten billion on on Joker two. Nothing against Joker two. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but but ten billion is uh, woof at the end of the day. Yeah. All right, moving. I'm up. almost a Warner Brothers apology. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. You're fine. No, I was going. just gonna say. It. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to save you <laughs> from saying say you're I'm an apologist. A- yeah, I say I'm kind of a Warner Brothers apologist because I love the DC properties, but even I'm going, damn. Yeah. Well, I and I honestly, I want to know if there's some fancy accounting behind the scenes for them to try to make it look like they're losing money so they're a better buy for another company, right? Is there, oh, yeah. if they're making money, why would anyone, you know, you know, why would they sell? They just continue to make more money for their investors. If they're losing that much money, um, maybe they look like a better buy and they're not really losing that much, but. Who are we? We don't have the money to hire the, the, the big movie lawyers to come in and tell us what's going on with it. Right. We need, Moving. We need Mike to rub elbows with those guys. Yeah, we, we, can, only, we can only hope he runs into somebody in L.A. At a, at a... <laughs> All right, so uh, Fantastic Four First Steps. i got some rumors for you here, and I'm going to get your take on this. I've, I've talked a lot about this with Mike about Fantastic Four and you know how it fits into the, the MCU proper. But the rumor is Galactus is going to summon the Fantastic Four to bring the uh, the son Franklin Richards to him, or he'll destroy the Earth. And he does this by sending the Silver Surfer to Earth. So, um, obviously, we, we've rumored over and over again that Franklin Richards will be in this movie, born to two superpowered parents. He has multiversal, or I guess... I guess cosmic abilities, maybe not multiversal, but probably he can manipulate universes a bit. Um, there's a comic book series called Earth X. Uh, it's an alternate universe where Franklin Richards becomes the second Galactus. And with that, he um, used the silver surfer Shala Ball, who was in this movie, and um, the other surfer, Norn Rad, Norn Rad, in that universe to only consume planets that would later give birth to Celestials, much like the ones taken out of the ocean in Marvel right now. Right. So with that, do you think that at the end of the day, they're going to end up having to fight Franklin at the end? I don't No, I think he'll be a baby. And I think he may be, um, maybe he is the reason they survive the, the multiversal clash crash. Um, right. Because if he, a, a child summons his powers, uh, the other rumor, I am not putting it in here cause I it has no weight is that Robert Downey Jr. Was only cast as, Doom, so he could be in this movie, and it wouldn't be more of a surprise later, right? They could film with him if he needed to be, and oh. and it could be Doom from this universe. Um, but you know, kind of pointing like you know, we we know Shala Ball is the Silver Surfer in this movie, which is also from the Earth X. Um, you know, Galactus needing Franklin Richards for some reason, maybe to travel multiversal. Maybe he's, he he experiences power burst when he's born. Um, kind of thing is is interesting. I I don't know. I I don't know why they would do it, but like also like all this is kind of lining up with how the Earth X universe kind of went, and um, knowing that the Earth was a a a celestial seed, if you will, that we learned from the Eternals. Um, and then in that other universe, if Galactus is only eating planets that you know are home to celestials, maybe maybe that ties into. When all these universes collapse together post Secret Wars, this uh, new this Galactus that, that lives in this universe is going after the celestial seed planets only. Right. That's a lot. That's lots of throw no, at somebody. I, that, yeah. No, it, it, and yeah, but, but I, I I've said it on here before, and I I know you know that I'm not I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the Fantastic Four, but. This does sound interesting, and it sounds different than what we've seen before. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, I'm excited for it as well. I think, you know, um, seeing the leaked footage, seeing Galactus have that scope, right, in that, that test footage, being a very large yeah. being, not just, you know, a, a, a cloud, if you will, um, would be huge. I don't really want Doctor Doom to be in this movie, if I'm going to be completely transparent. He's been in every Fantastic Four movie released to this date right. so i think we can do without him uh even though he is the the main uh season in Fortnite that launched on friday is is absolute doom so it's you know dr doom 
So we could do without for a little bit, but you know, if they're able to tie in a, a different universe where, yes, Celestials and Galactus and Silver Surfers and you know, powered children tie together, let's go for it. Because I am in love with the aesthetic of the Fantastic Four, and it feels different and it looks different. And um, when you have again Matt Shackman who has you know the ability to bring a vision to life again, like he did with WandaVision, um, yeah, let, let him have it. Let him let him roll with it, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, all those reasons is, are the same reasons I'm, I'm I'm pumped for this. So, I, and if you'd asked me a year ago, I would have told you no way. Yeah. But everything they keep showing us is like exactly what I would want mm-hmm. if I, you know, had a dream scenario for the the Fantastic Four. And I think honestly, even I think to me it's different than that because they show me everything I didn't think I'd see. Um, I thought they would go the easy route, the the, the safe route, right after putting. Uh, John, John, uh, not Krasinski. Um, what's yeah, that? yeah. Uh, Krasinski in, in, in as fan, Mr. Fantastic. I'm like, oh, they're gonna go down the blue suit with the big four in the chest. They're gonna play it safe. Uh, no, this, they're they're going 60s. They're going retro future, and I'm in love with it. Right. Moving into that, after Fantastic Four, we get obviously Doomsday, but Secret Wars is on the horizon. This might tie a little bit into Doomsday. I don't know. We'll see. But the rumor mill from a very un a fifty fifty rumor source scooper, if you will, has said that the, uh, some of the returning characters for this film could very well be, and I will list them off here: Tobey Maguire as Spider Man, Chris Evans as Captain America, Nicolas Cage as Ghost Rider, Wesley Snipes as Blade, and Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. And again, the scooper very hit or miss on the reliability. Uh, it could be early list, could be just a list of a wish list here because literally people will be making um, cameo rumor mill articles for now until this movie comes out, just like Deadpool and Wolverine was. But recently, right. on a uh, one of the artists for Deadpool and Wolverine showed uh, some concept art of him fighting, you know, uh, against other the Deadpool variants. But Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider was in that. Um, obviously he did not make it. Um, Ben Affleck's Daredevil was as well, who didn't make it, but, um, it looks like, you know, obviously they hadn't really written that out, like as an option, they were like, yeah, if we can get Nicolas Cage or his ghostwriter in, let's use it. Right. Uh, it's not off the table. So I could see them doing that here. Right. And it, Cage isn't too busy being John. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. He, he's too busy being spider noir. Right. Uh, that's, is that what we're worried about? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, but Wesley Snipes, you know, his return in Deadpool and Wolverine, these are spoilers, by the way, but this movie's been out for so long and all these are all social media anyway, so I'm, I'm not I'm not worried about it. Um, his return has been celebrated by so many people, right? Uh, the, the return, the longest running character to be played as a Marvel character now uh, because he he was before even X-Men. Uh, so uh, in, in I think 97, 98 for Blade One. So. Um, people have been loving the return of Wesley Snipes' Blade. So absolutely, if he, if he's game, you're game, we can get him, bring him into it, right? Like that that doesn't offend me at the end of the day if they want to grab some more legacy characters that are uh, popping off right now. What do you think? Yeah, I'm the same way. Um, and again, a, a small brief spoiler. I know they, they made light of Ben Affleck not being in Deadpool. Mm-hmm. But I, I think just for me... Um, I'm kind of a Daredevil fan. I would love to like just see him pop up, even for a frame. Mm-hmm. And and I don't mean like a scream grab from the movie, but to see him like now would be fun. Um, as, long as, that, eating dunk, no, as long as he's eating guys. Dunkin' Donuts in his Daredevil outfit, that's <laughs> that's right. He, he's got the DD on, but like oh it's Daredevil, he's like, no, I'm Dunkin' Donuts, and and that would be even funnier. Right. That would be the best kind of a mix of both worlds there across that. Oh um, yeah, that would be good. But um, um but yeah. no, as far as these other guys, um, man, I am a, a, a like a Tobey Maguire fan from day one. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually graduated college because I wrote a paper on the first Maguire Spider-Man movie. It came out the same year I graduated, and uh, yeah, to see any time he returns to to the, I guess the screen or whatever you want to call it, it he. He just gives, and that's a, yeah. and I'm there for it. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I'll, I'll sign up just for that. Yeah, I think he, you know, obviously, he came back for Spider-Man: uh, No Way Home. Uh, obviously, would love to see his world a little bit, even if they can show us. Um, did, did he mention? I think 
Mary Jane and him were together, maybe in that world or not. I don't remember. Um, yeah, they, I think they were. Yeah, like give us give us some uh, Kirsten Dunst, right? Just a a window in his world a little bit more uh, would be great. But uh, you know, he's he's shown the the desire to return. Chris Evans obviously desire to return. Uh, Scarlett Johansson as a producer, of Marvel will probably return, right? Um, they're going to be throwing so much money at this uh, movie that I, I think a lot of people would gladly come back for, for that. And none of these people, I'm I, again, I'm a fan. They've all played their roles really well. People may not love Ghost Rider, but you know Nicolas Cage in, especially in Spirit of Vengeance, went full crazy. If you go watch behind the scenes of him with the uh, skull paint on his face, where he's before they CGI'd the flaming skull over him, he does the crazy. So. Yeah. Yeah, they've all definitely uh, brought their own flavor to it, and yeah. and I, th- I think that's just a benefit to us. Yeah. So uh, get ready for these rumor uh, articles to blow through uh, the roof. Here we only bring this up because it's the first one, so we'll see if any of this comes to fruition over the next several years. Finally, Jim. Right. Finally, I've been waiting for weeks for this to. Get online. Thunderbolts. The trailer was shown at San Diego Comic-Con. Everything else leaked from San Diego Comic-Con except the Thunderbolts trailer. And I don't know why, because people know about it the least. I mean, it's not Captain America. It's not Red Hulk. It's not Harrison Ford, obviously. You know Harrison Ford uh, a little bit. Right. right. You're a fan. Um, Even, uh, what was it? Um, The Fantastic Four test footage got leaked. But no one leaked the Thunderbolt stuff, which obviously was probably the easiest stuff to leak. Um, but finally, after three weeks uh, and some screenshots here and there, we finally got our first look at it. I cannot link it here because it was taken down, uh, but maybe you can find it if you search and Google enough. But one of the cool things about this, Jim, and I'm going to tell you, because I think you watched it, at least or seen the screenshots, number one, uh, seems to, I don't know if it's, I don't think it'll be R rating, but these people are, uh, will kill. You know, Yelena takes down some, some faceless guards, if you will, uh, trying to break into something. But then we get to see a big, um, I wouldn't say free for all, but a very interesting action scene of Yelena versus U.S. Agent versus Ghost versus uh, Taskmaster, um, all together um, before they meet someone named Bob. But the suits for Taskmaster and Ghost, I think they got some upgrades, man. I seeing the white mask on Taskmaster t- kind of align her with the comic book counterpart with the white skull, and then Ghost getting a full on, um white mask with the breathing apparatus uh, just absolutely stunning to look at in in this uh obviously low res phone quality teaser trailer but really cool to see <laughs> along the way yeah no they they definitely look good um do you think we'll ever see taskmaster in the full like cloak and, and hood uh well she kind of had one in the first one but with this outfit maybe maybe a little bit i think you know a lot of people want the um Oh, well, I forget his name. His last name is Masters version. Tony Masters from the comic books. And we may get one eventually, but I think they are adapting this into the the better feel, the better visual style that people are familiar with for Taskmaster along the way. Right. Um, but, then, yeah, go ahead. Um, what was it? I was going to say the other great reveal that probably brought you tremendous delight. Yeah, well, there's just Bob. And you meet uh, Lewis Pullman, uh, son of Bull Pullman, uh, playing Bob. And he's just kind of in some scrubs and like, they send you Bob? He's like, send me. I've, I've been here. Uh, and uh, obviously, what from what I can uh, extrapolate from this, Bob is Robert Reynolds, the human alter ego of the Sentry slash the Void. And while they didn't show anything, my my excitement is through the roof, Jim. Obviously, this is where uh, one of my favorite characters is coming to life. Uh, after they what they did to my Black Bolt uh, in the TV show, they redeemed him at least in Doctor Strange. Uh, but you know, um, just just kind of kind of excited to see this along the way. And someone who appears to be, you know, obviously there's a couple of scenes in here where it's just someone like a chemist. Bob, the, the century's powers come from drinking a super soldier serum that was, you know, a, a lot stronger than it should have been. That's kind of where he gets his powers. So. It seems it might be leaning into a chemically uh, empowered uh, Bob Sentry character in this along the way. Um, right. One of the I would also say one of the cool things that I'm, I like and, and everyone else should be digging is Bucky returns, but he's got his long hair, Jim. He's growing it back out. We don't have clean cut Bucky. We got Winter Soldier looking Bucky right. coming back in this. And uh, I know you guys mentioned it a, a, a couple a week or two ago, just from the reactions but watching him pull his arm out of a <laughs> dishwasher was hilarious 
yeah, yeah, he's just washing his uh, vibranium arm right in, in the dishwasher, kind of along the way. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's he's obviously it's some they show uh, Julia uh, Louis Dreyfus as Val again, and there's a there's a scene where they kind of all get together. Oh, um, oh, what's his name? Ray Guardian, the actor's name. Can't think of it. Uh, from Stranger, David Harbor shows up as, as a Ray Guardian at the oh, beginning, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. in the end. So he he's in the suit, but they show up at, in a big uh, office looking building, uh, like a, a big skyscraper, to see Val. And I think that might be, as we rumored, the Avengers Tower, Jim, uh, that they're standing in there at the trailer. So right, and that would be interesting. But here's the other question. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's called the Thunderbolts. Asterix. Why didn't we see Harrison Ford in the trailer? Yeah. So for those who may be wondering Thunderbolts, a lot of people may not know the connection that the Thunderbolts were named after General Thunderbolt Ross, who is now President Thunderbolt Ross in the the, the upcoming Captain America Brave New World. So why would they have a team called the Thunderbolts if Thunderbolt Ross is not in charge of it? Well, that's why the title has an asterisk. I think um, the in the leaked trailer we saw from Brave New World, Cap, uh, not Captain America, but Harrison Ford says, I want to rebuild the Avengers, right? That's what he wants to do, make them rebuild yeah. the Avengers. So he wants to be, to be a U.S. government agency, uh, kind of like how he always wanted. So my guess is that the Thunderbolts are his new Avengers. And at the end, the asterisks, we're going to find out they're going to be revealed to the world as, you know, the new, hey, here's our new Avengers team, right? So it's just kind of an asterisk as they build a new Avengers team uh, for Thunderbolt Ross. My guess. Um, that, and th- that's kind of the way I was going too. But um, I also wonder, and I genuinely hope this isn't true, but maybe Ross doesn't make it through the new Captain America movie. Yeah, uh, it's 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 yeah. hard it's hard to kill Hulk. Um, very hard to kill Hulk. Right. Uh, so I think he might make it out of there. I think, um, you know, I, I I'm going to play you know the safe side. I would just say it's going to be one of those things like you know. Uh, the asterisk is a big sticking point. Is people are like, what's the asterisk in for? Like, we can't tell you. So I think that's where it's going to be, you know, um, if there is any connection, I think it'll be his new Avengers initiative along the way. And right. it, I, I, we have heard that he is not in this movie, but, you know, how often is Marvel changing things over there now, right? The Disney initiatives. We need to right. create con- quality content. We need to make it better. And if we need a scene where he's in it, kind of like, do you remember the post credit scene for... Uh, the Incredible Hulk, where Tony Stark showed up to talk to, yeah, the Ross. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's something. Maybe it's a, a small scene with Harrison Ford like that, right? Like something they could get with. So they may they right. may lie to us. They may bring him in. I don't know, but you know, from what we got in those, this teaser, those are the guys that say, yeah, it's just they're they're renowned for lying to us. So yeah, who knows what's going on over there? To be honest, yeah, exactly. Um, so. Uh, my guess is they have a plan, and and then they'll they'll see it through. But yeah, with a two and a half minute, almost three minute teaser, I'm very happy with what we saw. Uh, very very excited. My uh, my wife oh, yeah. has no idea what the Thunderbolts were. We're like, what's this? Well, that looks exciting. That looks thrilling. That you know. Um, so it sounds like we're gonna have two pretty good down to earth thrillers or you know political thriller action movies coming out February and uh, uh, May of next year. So if you guys can find that online, do right. let oh, us yeah. know what you uh, think. Any- yeah, anytime you can step back into the um, uh, Winter Soldier vibe, you're you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a turning point for Marvel. But the other thing we got is a, uh, and I've got this linked here, and it may still be linked. I don't know. Uh, when you guys get here, is a uh, the trailer um, for Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, the upcoming animated series from D23 last week. So we get to see this full motion, which is why I've kind of been like, what are they going to do? How's this going to look? So it really showcases to me a classic comic book art style, but in motion. Like, that's hard to explain, but if you look at like a 1960s Spider-Man book, right? Like the the, the stereotypical nerdy Peter Parker, um, it's just been high resed up a bit, given some color and then some motion. Like if that comic book was really just a TV show kind of along the way. And... um it, it looks it looks interesting. Uh, I, I think it's different than What If. It'll be different than Eyes of Wakanda and um, X Men ninety seven. So I'm I'm very thrilled with what this looks like. Now, will I be enthralled with the story? I don't know yet. This doesn't tell me much. It just shows Peter getting bit by a spider when he's talking to classmate Nico Minoru, 
and uh, what appears to be a redheaded Mary Jane Watson running over to him as he passes out. So I don't know the story, Jim, but what do you think? Just just looking at it. Um, and yeah, that's the little bit I saw too, was the spider biting him. Um, Mike kind of discussed this earlier too, that what is it? There's a two year, three year max cycle of Spider-Man animated shows. Mm -hmm. And I think they need to go in a direction like this to separate it from all the other ones that have come before it. Yeah. Um, and and that's a good thing. Um, from, from what I've seen so far, yeah. I don't even know how to, like you said, to describe it. There's that 60 style animation. Yeah. Um, no, I, yeah, I'm I'm curious to see how they do this. Uh, originally, when they discussed it, when it was called Freshman Year, I thought it was going to be the cartoon adventures of Tom Holland's Spider-Man when he had on that original, like, I don't know what you want to call it, the the sports equipment suit that he had before Tony Stark gave him his first Spider-Man suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and they, I'm kind of glad that's not what it is. Yeah, no, they, they, they. I think they've always said it would be a, a different multiverse or uh, kind of thing. They don't want to retell that stuff. So yeah, I agree that I'm glad it's different. But if you, um, I would say if you keep watching through the the trailer for anyone who can still watch it, they go into like, oh, well, here's some comic book covers, or here's like the little corner panels of like the Spider-Man outfit. Remember in like old comics, they'd have like the full outfit in the upper left hand corner on the covers. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So they're utilizing mm-hmm. panels and covers. They have a the classic remix of the Spider Man song, does whatever Spider Man can. So like it, it it's really harkening back to that old thing, but with a twist, right? Like, you know, obviously um he, he's he's friends with um Nor- Norman Osborn is this guy in the chair. And and Norman Osborne they've they've race swapped him. He you know, he's African American, so they've they're really kind of leaning into some different stuff here. But you know, you're right, it it doesn't look like any other Spider Man show before this. And you'll be able to pick it out of a lineup pretty pretty quickly uh, with that as well. Right. So I'm excited. I want to see more. Uh, give us give us this. Hopefully it comes out later this year, um, or maybe maybe even next year. Whatever. Animated shows. I don't think need to worry about the movie releases. Uh, I, I don't even think you need to worry about the live action stuff because they don't feel like they're going to cross over anytime soon. But. Uh, if we get this right. Peter Parker, like an animated version in Secret Wars, like it's just like a little flash by, like, oh, the, here's all the multiverses. I'm like, ah, oh, that'd be pretty fun to to see it kind of pay off down the road. Yeah, or even um, the next Spider-Verse yeah. movie, yeah. if we ever get that. Yeah, we will. Two to three years. It's always two to three years away. <laughs> right. Uh, so let's get to the meat here. Craven the Hunter, Sony's next uh, Spider-Man universe thing here. Uh, has really real new trailer. It's an R-rated trailer, uh, and the the biggest thing here everyone's talking about is the Rhino has been revealed in full form, and it's not um, the Rhino's looks have been heavily decried online. He does not look well, does not look good. He's kind of a gray CGI man, uh, if you will, very nondescript. Uh, looks like he injects himself with some DNA to transform himself into the Rhino. So that's not what I want to talk about too much what i want to talk about is like in this trailer um watching craven literally hunt people and like maim them was very interesting for me because i'm like oh they're leading into the r-rated version of um not necessarily body horror but he is really killing these people in some creative ways uh, along the way here yeah i haven't i'll be honest i haven't watched this one yet Uh um but i I, again they got to do something to make them stand out um mm-hmm. specifically i guess my biggest exposure to him i mean yeah i've read comics and stuff but i would say the way he was in the new spider-man video game yeah um ruthless and uh very effective so i think in order to showcase that you're gonna have to do that it's got to be r-rated yeah. and he's got to be fairly horrible uh, yeah. in a good way but yeah, the what's different? Guess, this trailer is very different than the first one. Uh, the first one talks, you know, really leans into that magic blood kind of thing, and like, you know, oh, your, you know, your father, it was awful to you. You need to come back and get revenge. Uh, this one leans more into like, you know, he's called the hunter. His name's obviously crazy. He's the hunter. Why do they call him the hunter? And what's he doing? And um, you know, there's a scene in this where he literally takes a bear trap to someone's head. Uh, again, that they'd set up for him. Uh, he he also like pulls like a body into a tree trunk that like 
explodes kind of right so uh they're they're leaning into some like he is very much a hunting but he's like hunting people rather than animals it looks like <laughs> or he's hunting the people who are hunting animals um it it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel gr- like a great movie. I'm not like jazzed for it, but this trailer has me more excited because it looks like, oh, there's going to be more about Craven than, oh my god, my father was horrible to me, so now I need to come back and prove to him that you know I'm a, I'm a real hunter, kind of thing. Um, you can also go watch the most right. replayed scene is is the rhino in the in the YouTube trailer. Um, so I I don't know. I'm I'm interested to to watch it, but again after the slate of sony movies uh thus far morbius uh madam web and then this the standalone movies the non-venoms i have no real um i guess i'm not jazzed to go watch it if that makes sense yeah i uh based a lot off of your guys's reviews and stuff i have yet to watch morbius or madam web Mm -hmm. um even with them being on Netflix, I just can't pull the trigger. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping, you know, each time one of these comes out, I hope that it's at least somewhat of a good quality just to, you know, yeah. kind of like the way the first Venom was. Just, yeah, it's two piles of goo fighting each other, but they did it with some some style. Yeah. And uh, I hope maybe that's what we can get from this. Yeah, I, or maybe just the, like you said, the the body horror stuff will be enough to make horror fans go see it. I guess I don't know. Well, I think also the uh, the idea, you know, Aaron Taylor Johnson, he's he's a good actor. He does great stuff, right? Bullet Train, Kick Ass, Quicksilver. He's he's done good things, um, in in the genre as well. So it's interesting that he would take this movie. You got Russell Crowe, the Gladiator himself, Jim, in this movie, uh, <laughs> playing his father. But um, it, it just feels like again. The thing with like sounds like Madam Web overproduced, right? Too many cooks in the kitchen trying to make something too different, and then when you do that and you lose the story, you you don't feel for the character. It's not it's not there, but you know this one again seems to be at least committing to the violence, committing to the gruesomeness of of Craven. He's not going to be like an anti hero kind of like. You know, how long has it taken Venom to be able to kill somebody, right? To 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 eat people. It took him three movies to really kind of commit to it, right? So this one, it's like, okay, right. well, if we go all in now, we don't have to worry about it later. So being the R-rated and going all in gives me a little bit of hope, but I still feel like over at Sony, there are too many, too many cooks in that kitchen. And I think that is where the, you know, uh, everything kind of starts to spill over a bit. Right. Uh, but yeah, any anything else you want to add to to the Craven? What you know about it, rather than than watching the trailer? Because woof, uh, this trailer is 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 um, a, it's a bit of a doozy by the time you get to the end. But I you know I, I'm going to give a friend to show Brian, my friend. Uh, you know he listens. He, he he has said that this movie at least is able to deliver the visuals of Craven. Like he's in his big furry coat right uh he is he's right. giving us the craven poses the craven looks in the forest um you know he he's running around like an animal at one point at the end he's got the the vest furry vest on with a torch he looks like craven and i think that is um kudos to them for at least nailing some of those visuals yeah definitely um no i just hope that especially for aaron taylor johnson that he delivers a performance that even if it's in a bad movie, we can stand behind, you know, at least enjoy that much. Yeah. A movie that, that makes a swing and fails is way more entertaining than a movie that doesn't make a swing and still fails. Uh, so, right. Um, looking at you, Borderlands, looking right at you. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, moving on to our last bit here, we're going to, we're going to step out of this into the DC world a bit because DC is great. We were, I was talking about this weekend with several people. We get, uh, Creature Commandos later this year, right? The first foray in the DCU proper. Mm-hmm. And then next July, before Fantastic Four, actually, we get Superman from James Gunn. And actress Isabella Merced is, uh, who I believe is an alien Romulus, has, has been asked about the hot girl suits, the you know Green Lantern suit, the um, Mr. Fantastic. We, get to see, we see the men on those set photos, right? Why are you guys in these weird non-costume or non-comic accurate costumes? And... She said very specifically, 
and I and I quote these speci- these these suits these Lord Tech suits are for this specific timeline in the story. And I'm going to read into that a little bit and think that maybe we get to see what uh, you know, Hot Girl. She's like an immortal or an alien, whichever one you're reading. We get to see you know other suits worn by these characters before they were working with Maxwell Lord in the Justice League International. What do you think about the suits? Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know if it'll be through a flashback or maybe some sort of montage through newspapers or something, but I. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they show us the evolution of like what they looked like when they first appeared to where they are now mm-hmm. and why they're there now. Right. And because I'm assuming Superman shows up to kind of shake up the status quo. Yeah, you know, Superman is not it's not day 1, it's more like year 1, right? Uh and you know obviously if the yeah. all the all the superpowers are either Argus backed or JSI or JLI, Justice League International backed or they're the authority backed like, you know, a a a a freelancer or uh you know solo operative is going to really shake that up right um and it'll be interesting i don't think the i don't think the suits are going to be the status quo but um maxwell lord will be played by sean gunn who was actually at the fan expo event this past weekend as well um playing that i i think we're going to get some some businessman who's like money is in superheroes so we're going to sponsor them i believe we also saw a scene um filmed a couple weeks ago in lord tech stadium i believe it was right so obviously uh the one yeah. one super company to own them all and sponsor superheroes because superheroes obviously you know we talked about spider-man he doesn't get paid for being a superhero right he's still poor he, right. he doesn't know so you know in a world where superhero being a hero doesn't get you paid someone's got to pay the bills and it sounds like uh, Max yeah. Lord is capitalizing on this along the way. Which also makes me think of like Vought from the boys. Mm-hmm. But maybe the heroes are, aren't quite such assholes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, that, that, that Green Lantern's got a big orange haired bowl cut. So we'll see how much of a dick he is. Um, but, Sean, right. but Sean Gunn said he and, and, and his brother James, obviously, uh, his Maxwell Lord performance is from written materials only, nothing live action. So taking uh, inspiration from the comic books, because as we know, uh, Pedro Pascal, um, our father, uh, you know, we call him daddy, obviously, on the show, um, played the character <laughs> in Wonder Woman 84, uh, a movie everybody obviously loves and has remembered exists after all this time. So uh, thankfully, right. I don't think he did a bad job. I don't think his role was was, was as... Maxwell Lord, son. but I couldn't have told you that character was Maxwell Lord until someone reminds me every time. Oh yes, the villain, quote unquote villain, in Wonder Woman eighty four is Maxwell Lord. So uh, nothing right. to stand out about the name. Um, yeah, I all I really rem- again uh, some of the ancillary or however you say that characters, like the most I remember about Maxwell Lord is from the Justice League animated series. And uh, and even then, they didn't delve into him too hard. So um, I'd like to see what they're going to do that would separate him from, like, Alex Luthor, mm-hmm. you know, where he's, you know, a rich guy, um, potentially a bad guy, but probably trying to be a good guy for the public. Um, he's the guy that's over these superheroes at the point at this point, possibly. So I, it's... It'll be an interesting, uh, what am I trying to say? The, the, uh, contrast, there we go. That's the word I'm looking yeah. for. Contrast between like your typical Lex Luthor character that we've seen time and time again in a Superman movie. Yeah. Well, regardless exactly. of how well they were played or how well they weren't. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out is, I guess what I'm trying to say. The, um, yeah, I don't know if it'll be someone that he's necessarily going against, or if he's just another player. In, you know, I in think the, background. The, the movie's probably yeah. too packed for him to be anything other than another player, right? Like, obviously, we've heard so many different characters, we've seen so many different characters. Throwing Maxwell, Lord, he's probably just someone who's there to be like, "Hey, Superman, I'll pay you, join my team," kind of thing. Here, here's what here's what I provide these other people. We saw Mister Terrific in like a terrific uh, pod or whatever. 
Um, you know, obviously mm-hmm. the Green Lantern, you know, he's got the Green Lantern, he's got a hot girl under his in, in his Justice League. Hey Superman, we want you to join us because you know we're off doing the right thing and we'll make sure you get the best treatment all around. So to me, he's just a businessman rather than I don't think he's a hero. I think he's just gonna end up being a businessman at the end of the day. He was like, it's all about brand naming your your heroes and being in front of everybody. So, right, we'll see. I like Sean Gunn. He's a fun. He's a fun guy. Um, when, oh yeah, I definitely enjoy the actor. So. Yeah, whatever. He's also who also will play Weasel in the uh, Creature Commandos show as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, but yeah, Superman July next year. We'll let you guys know as we hear more as it comes through. Yeah, yeah he's he's definitely this generation's Ted Raimi. Yeah, he 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 is he is everywhere. If there's a James Gunn movie, by God, he's in it. Uh, that's guaranteed guaranteed right. work <laughs> for him. Um, but yeah, so that that brings us to our hour for for the show, Jim. I really do appreciate you stepping in today, helping us out with the show. Uh, being a guest, reacting to the show notes live, really, really with me. I, I do appreciate that and adding some some uh, context. But uh, if people want to know what you're up to, uh, what you're doing when you're not guest host on the show, where can they find you at? Um, I'm HF like Harrison Ford, six zero five uh, on PlayStation, Xbox. Um, if you Google that, you'll probably find me just about anywhere. I can confirm this is correct. He is that literally everywhere that you can make it, make it a, a handle that along the way. I, I'm nerdy enough that I actually got that as a license plate now. Oh well, now now I have a problem with with your vanity plates, Jim. But you know we'll we'll take that up <laughs> off the air. Right. Yes. Uh, for, for those, um, so how about you? Yes, you can find me at uh, Instagram Valdan eighty seven V A L D A N eight uh, seven. But I uh, put my picture with Charlie Cox on there. I'll probably put it as a regular post. It was on my, um, you know, stories for a minute there. I, he's just it was just a fun guy to talk to for just a, even if it was a couple seconds. Right now, his favorite burger place was in and out. He's a, he's a normal person like us, Jim, just like us. Um, right. But yeah, you know, I can ask. Was it interesting hearing his accent? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was talking to uh, so two people in front of me was a, a guy and a kid, and they um they check all the photos before they do the next one, so in case anyone blinked or there's an issue. So he had to redo that, so I had to wait a little bit longer. So hearing them talk to them, you know, was was nice to to hear the 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 British accent come out was wild. And then also he has a bunch of tattoos, uh, which you don't see in the show. So yeah, uh, I saw this, that. These yeah. tattoos was fun. Um, yeah. So it was again really, really, really cool. Uh, but but uh, you feel you feel comfortable enough to do the rest of the show? You think tell people where, where to find us? Yeah. So as always, please visit superheroslate dot com. They've got the uh, or I guess we yeah. have the uh, all the show notes, all the the links that we've talked about. If they're still up for some of the leaked stuff, um, you can find it all there. Even a timeline for what movies are coming out when. Uh, I assume that's been updated. Uh, it, we update it when when we can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. No, no, but, no worries. Um, but you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and anywhere else you can find your podcasts. Um, and then the other thing you can do is go to superheroslate.com slash store to get all of your Superhero Slate, slate swag. So if, if somebody were to go look at Chris's picture with Charlie Cox, mm-hmm. they'll notice a picture or a shirt that you can pick up on that store. That's right. Designed by Mike uh, for San Diego Comic Con 2019. It is the Infinity Gauntlet with the burger that says Superhero Slate. I'm actually wearing my shirt right now because I always pack all my Superhero Slate shirts for con. So I've got one right now. I uh, love the designs. Really, really appreciate Mike putting those up there. And if anyone's wearing them, I, I, I love to see it. Share your photos with us. Yeah, um, for sure. Awesome. Well, if uh, you know nothing else, uh, again, Jim, thank you so much for stepping in. Appreciate it, and we will see everybody else next week. Right, bye, everybody.